Today's episode of the Fine Home Building Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot. There's a difference between do it yourself and do it for a living. At The Home Depot, they get that, and they're here to help pros get the whole job done better and faster. Get the lowest price in the things you need with bulk and volume pricing. Then, get it all where you need it and when with buy online, pick up in store, or job site delivery with text notifications. You save time and money. When you've got a job, they're on the job. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. So you can get there by 10 different ways, meaning we're going to take one piece of this cost and mark it up by this percentage, another piece of the cost by this percentage, but the math works out. You could just total all of that up and, and take your price and divide it by that. It's the same thing. Welcome, everybody, to a special episode of the Fine Home Building Podcast. It's special because we are doing a two-part series with our friend and Fine Home Building Ambassador, Sean Van Dyke. Say hello, Sean. Hello, everybody. Give him that nice gravelly voice from down down in, uh, where are you at, Knoxville, Tennessee? Yeah, Knoxville, Tennessee. Yep, I see you got a little, some. we got, we got Sean on Skype, so I can see his office setup. He's got his little, uh, his guitars in the background, looks like his little couch where he hides out from his wife and kids. Um, yep. <laughs> so, yep. Futon is very important in an office. <laughs> so we got Sean on Skype for two episodes where we're going to dive into all things business. And Sean, if you don't know, if you haven't heard him on past episodes, is a, a business consultant who specializes um, in helping out builders, remodelers, and everybody in the in the residential construction trade. Um, so he's going to, we, we got, we prepared a bunch of questions, some coming from the audience, and we're going to we're going to see if we can dig in and help some of the most, uh, I guess we'll call it like the, the frequently asked questions with Sean Van Dyke, right? Yeah, that's good. I like that. Um, so we're going to start off with, uh, oh, I should mention too, that if you want to watch the, the video of this, it's at findhomebuilding.com slash podcast. And uh, if you want to go to Sean's website, seanvandyke.com, right? Yep. S-H-A-W-N. Yeah, Sean with D-A-N-D-Y-K-E. the W. D-A-N-D-Y-K-E. All right. So first and foremost, we're going to talk mostly about how to operate a successful business, kind of a broad category. Um, but what we want to really focus on is sort of getting started successfully in business. And I'm, and I'm guessing that getting started will not be, you know, when we're talking about being successful, getting started is not going to be limited to people who are truly just getting started. It's going to be for the people who've been doing it for a few years or a few decades and still haven't quite figured out how to, <laughs> how to do it the right way. So, uh, um, let's, uh, let's start with the, you know, the real basics, Sean, the common misunderstandings when it comes to business finances. So, I mean, things like markup and overhead and like, you know, how do you set your price? Yeah. Well, that's, that's jumping right into the deep end, uh, right there. Yeah. Um, and, and I've, and I've said this before, I've probably even said it on, on the podcast before, but the, the pricing strategy, especially when it comes to markup and what, what to charge. That is the biggest misunderstanding that I find even with, uh, professional construction business owners, they still don't have a good grasp on it because of usually, and this won't apply to all of the cases, but, but most people that are starting out in the construction business, whether they really are just starting out, they've got a little bit of experience and decided, Hey, I want to jump in and do this. Or they've been working in the industry for someone else for, you know, 10, 15 years and decide to finally go out on their own. That, that, markup thing, that pricing, how do we, how do we calculate, how do we calculate what that is? And, um, the, the biggest problem with it is that, that most construction business owners don't understand the difference between the two terms, markup and margin. Mm -hmm. And here's how I always define it. And this is the most important equation that construction business owners need to understand whether you're just starting out or whether you've been in business for a while and you're kind of struggling. And here's what it is. It is your price equals your costs times your markup. No, that's my, it. Not my price being what I'm going to charge the customer or what I'm going to sell my goods for or whatever I'm doing in my business. Yeah. Your, your, your price. That, okay. that, that's, uh, that's what the customer, that's the number that the customer sees. Got it. The cost is what it costs you to, you know, and so this is how, how I define what the costs are. And for a construction company, this is why it's it's so 
it, it's so fundamental to understand some of these terms because a construction company is different than any other kind of business and any other kind of business is different from a construction company. In general, and I'm painting with a pretty broad brush here, our costs for a construction company are the cost of labor, materials, subcontractors, and equipment. Okay. That's, that's pretty much it. So uh, that's there. there's always this um, misunderstanding around the cost and expenses. Right. And so, those it's, so it's not my cell phone. It's not my, my accountant. It's none of that stuff. None of that stuff. And but, but in that equation, that's why it's so important. Your price equals your cost times your markup. So we got to know what our costs are. And these are the things that we as the business owner, we buy and we sell. Uh, or Sorry, we buy, we mark up, and we sell to our clients. And the result of those are usually left out in the field. Now, it doesn't always apply, but that's a pretty general term, meaning, hey, I buy a two by four, mm -hmm. I'm going to mark it up, and I'm going to sell it to my client. Now, I'm going to cut it up, and I'm going to, you know, it's going to be left out in the field. So that's pretty easy to understand. But the same thing with the labor, right? You're going to buy the labor from someone, or this is, we'll get into this later, you're going to buy it from yourself, and you're going to mark that cost up and you're going to sell it or the result of that will be left out in the field. Okay. So the cost or if you, you know, if you're talking to your CPA, your bookkeeper or you're looking at your profit and loss statement, that's going to show up as your COGS, C O G S, cost mm. of goods sold. Okay. Those terms are interchangeable. So we take our costs, we got to figure out what they are and then we need to apply a markup to them and then we sell that. And that markup has to be high enough to pay for our expenses and leave us with a net profit. And so people will naturally say, okay, well, what's an expense? If it's not a cost of goods sold, it's an expense. And so like the example you just said is, is you don't, you, you know, you need every construction business owner and most employees of construction businesses, um, they need a cell phone in order to operate their business, mm -hmm. but you don't sell cell phones. Right. The same thing is, you know, you don't sell stamps and paper clips and envelopes, but you probably need all those things in the office in order to operate your business. But we don't mark up our cell phones. We don't mark up our paper clips and stamps. We mark up our costs of goods sold or our costs. And so that's why we got to understand what the markup is. And so the markup applies to our costs in order to determine our price. Okay. Now we want that, we want that price high enough so that when we subtract out our costs and our expenses, that there's something left over, our net profit, and you can get down into the details, gross profit versus net profit, but the money left over from that equate, you know, from our, the difference between our price and our cost is our, is our profit. Mm -hmm. The profit is what determines our margin. I've already, have I already, I probably lost half of the, half no, of the no, audience. No. We're good. We're good. Yeah. So anyway, that, but that just to back up saying, okay, here's the, the equation price equals cost times markup. Construction companies are a cost-based business. You got to know what your costs are and you have to develop your markup so that it's high enough to pay for the expenses, everything else that's not a cost of goods sold. Okay, but so so I got to ask a couple of side questions. I want to get into the the how do you figure out the markup because you haven't touched on that yet. And I mean it's it's nice to just say mark it up, and I know a lot of people do that. They just throw an arbitrary percentage on. Um, mm -hmm. but a couple of side questions that I know are going to pop up in some in some people's minds are okay i know that i'm going to buy a two by four and then i'm going to mark it up x amount to in order to provide it to my client i'm going to cut it up like you said i'm going to install it what if i get that two by four from a wholesaler or what if i get it on sale do i mark up the original market price or my wholesale sale price well that that de that depends on the value to which you can sell it Okay. Uh, so, so let's say for example, I get a 18 year old kid working in my company and I, and I judge that he's really, really good. Even though he's green, he's really, really good. And he agrees, uh, to work for me for 15 bucks an hour. Yeah. And all I have him do is sweep up the floors, empty the trash cans and help with tool set, you know, very basic labor around the job site. Other companies might find that same 18 year old kid and they might have to pay him $18 an hour. Right. Right. And so they'll, they'll mark up that cost $18 an hour and sell that to their clients. If, if I can find somebody that will work for $15 an hour and do $18 an hour work, then I'm going to try to 
charge my clients for the $18 an hour because not only does that give me more profit, mm -hmm. but it also gives that employee room to, room to grow. Meaning in a few months, if he's really good at sweeping up and interviewing the trash cans, I can give him a raise and I don't have to raise my price because I'm selling the value of that work. Right. So for example, so you talked about like, hey, I get a two by four on sale or a lot, you know, really practical example is a lot of contractors will get a 2% discount if they pay by the 10th yes, of the month. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That is a, that is a business operations decision. Okay. Meaning, do you want to pass that, that savings on to your clients? If you do, then you operate your business in a way that you can pay your bills by the 10th of the month and you're able to provide your clients with that, uh, with that 2%. But I say it's so small uh, on the client's side of it, they probably won't really notice. What's more important is just selling, selling the value of that. So I would take that 2% um, and keep that internally, meaning, okay, we pay, again, just numbers off the top of my head, $2 for a two by four. Mm -hmm. And if I paid it by the 10th of the month, I get it for $1.95. Yep. I'm still going to sell it to my client at $2 plus the markup. And I'm going to pocket the difference in, because that's how I've chosen to run the company is to take advantage of a savings like that. So what you're talking about there is getting into what, and that's the hard part. That's, that, that's where when you're starting out in business, it takes some testing to figure out what exactly your value is. Right. And I may, and I may have thrown it. You mean, you mentioned we're, we're diving right in. I may have taken us like dragged us underwater and, you know, we're grasping for air at this point with the <laughs> being bogged down with little nuances. But these are the little things that I think pop up. You know, we talk in broad strokes and your broad strokes presentations are awesome, but it's like the, it's those little tiny details that you have to figure out you know, where the rubber meets the road that are hard. Like another, for instance, like, let's say I figured out my expenses. Um, I know I have a cell phone. I know I have a shop space. I have a, a van that I drive and I'm writing off parts of that. I have an employee that I pay a, a, a wage to. Those are like my fixed expenses, let's say. And, um, well, I tell you what, before I even go there, you better get <laughs> into the markup because I think I'm going to, I think we need to know the markup before I ask that next question. So I'll give it back to you. Sorry. Yeah. So, so what I was going to say is, as far as the, as far as the markup, it, that markup factor, and this is where a lot, there's a lot of confusion too, because guys will start looking at the numbers and they, they just don't know what their markup needs to be. So they'll apply one markup to their labor Yes. and they'll apply another markup to their materials. And then they'll apply another markup to the subcontractors. And that that's one real key that that is uh, keeping profits and, and profitability low for a construction company. For example, I, I hear this all the time is, oh, well, why would I mark up my subcontractors the same amount that I would mark up my labor? Because I've got to do a lot of work and manage a lot to, mm -hmm. to have the labor, but I can call up my plumber and he can give me a price for, you know, $3,000. And if you're saying, again, I'm just making this up. If my markup is 50%, let's say I mark up my labor by 50%, but I don't really have to do anything, uh, for my plumber. Cause he's a really good plumber. He gives me a $5,000 price. You're saying I have to mark that up by 50% and sell that for $7,500 as right. opposed to a 10%. And that's, that's where the disconnect comes in. That's where, again, back to the value in order to establish a relationship with a subcontractor. In this example, we're talking about a plumber. You've got to put in hundreds, if not thousands of hours of research and development of coffee and lunches and donuts to find the type of plumber that you can just call up, say, Hey, I've got this work, come out and do it. And they execute it with, with professionalism. So you don't have to do a lot of work yet. Right. By the time you find that plumber that charges you $5,000 to do that thing, they show up, they do good work and they're gone. And you feel like, man, I didn't have to do anything. I can't justify marking them up. You got to remember it's taken you years of experience and relationship building to get to that point because not every contractor can call up a plumber and say, come out to the job, do the scope of work, and they do it correctly on time and with the same quality. So there's a lot of value there. But wait, and, wait, would you feel the same way, though, Sean, if I have a customer going, you know, I'm hiring you to redo my bathroom. Um, they say uh, this is, you know we say like, this is the sink I think you should get. It's going to fit with your bathroom style. I'm going to order it for you. And let's say the sink costs a hundred bucks 
Am I marking that up 50% just for clicking add to cart in Amazon and shipping it to myself? I mean, uh, you know, that's another example, I guess, in my head where I feel like, you, you know, should the customer be penalized for buying a $2,000 sink versus a $100 sink? Like, I'm I'm just getting this massive percentage of it for pretty much doing no extra work with, compared to the $100 and the $2,000 sink. Yeah, but you, you're you taking on the risk. So when you're saying you click yes. add to cart, you're talking about the contractor ordering that Correct. sink. Correct. Yes, I'm sorry. Right? Yes. Again, th there are contractors out there that don't know all of those. They don't know that they can get high-quality products from a certain distributor or a certain supplier because not all of them are equal. So when I, as the contractor, hit add to cart and I buy, let's say, a $1,000 sink, I'm 100% resp 100 responsible for everything. I've purchased the risk that comes in handling that sink. Right. So when the sink shows up and it's been damaged in shipping, that's on me. Mm -hmm. When when that delays my schedule, it's not the owner's fault. It's my fault. Hopefully everything goes well and it goes perfectly. I order the thing. It shows up. It's the right stuff. We install it and we're off to the races. But if something goes wrong, I can't go back to the homeowner and say, well, I wasn't really making any money because I just clicked on the button and now all of these things have gone wrong. I need to charge you for that. Right. The owner's going to say, hey, you're a professional. You should have included whatever could possibly go wrong or, you know, whatever could happen when we establish the price. And and so and that's where that's where the disconnect comes to. Well, I'm just buying materials. You know, the owners, they could run down and get the two by fours. And I say, OK, let them. Let them spend their time. What they don't realize is when you order the lumber package, when you order the sink or whatever, you're culling through materials. Right. You're 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 adding a level of professionalism that that homeowners don't know. So same thing with the subcontractor is, yeah, I hope that you have a subcontractor that you don't have to do a lot of work when they're on the job. But it usually takes a lot of work to find that professional that works within your system and does your type of projects and knows you, you've got some training in there, right? How you, how you like your, your, your stuff done. Now, if a homeowner wants to buy the sink and try and save themselves a little money, I'm going to sell them on the same risk, uh, um, distribution, meaning, Hey, if you want to buy your own sink, maybe that's okay. It depends on the, depends on the company, but let me tell you what risk you're taking on. If you buy the sink, we need it here by this date. If it's not here by this date and my plumber's standing around or I'm standing around, we're going to charge you $75 per hour <laughs> until you get us the right sink. That sounds nice. Or, or we say, oh, we talked about having a single sink. You ordered the double one because it was on sale and you didn't realize that it changed the whole configuration of the plumbing. And now it, now it shows up and we're ready to install a single bowl sink and you've got a double sink or whatever it is. Right. Now we're charging you 75 to 100 bucks an hour to fix the problem. And it's not our fault. So right. if if you want to buy your own materials, that may be OK. I don't recommend that, especially for remodel, you know, remodeling contractors. But that may be OK. But you're transferring the risk to yourself. Right. OK. And if that if that risk comes up, it's going to cost you 75 bucks an hour until the risk is now mitigated by us. Yeah. All right. You totally convinced me. All right. But let's get back to the, the markup. So how do I get there? How do I figure so, out the markup? Okay, so we're going to take you, you know, take a look at your in, the income that you need to generate for your business. And when you start out, you don't know what that is. It, so it's a chicken or the egg sort of thing. Right. So you got to start. It's just an you know an iterative <clears throat> process. But when you sit down and you think about it and you say, what are my costs for labor for any given period of time? Say for a year. Let, so let's just say that it's that it's a small company, it's you and one other person. And your your value as a, let's say a lead carpenter is 30 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. So we know 30 bucks an hour for a for an employee or a lead carpenter for roughly 2,000 hours would be $60,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one part of our labor. Um, we've got uh, a helper and we pay them 20 bucks an hour. So that's $40,000 a year. So now we got sixty thousand dollars and forty thousand. That's our labor costs okay. for those two people working. Now we got to figure out how how much are we going to have in materials. I, I don't I don't know. You got to look back and say what's our average project size. 
how many bathrooms, how many kitchens, how many additions, whatever that is, and figure out what your materials are. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's, it's, it, it, it's actually not that hard. Most contractors, anybody with some, um, some experience can just sit down and start, you know, we know what two by fours cost. We know what plywood costs. We know, you know, we know a lot of these things. It just, we just got to sit down and, and do it. And we do that for our subcontractors and, and our equipment as well. And when I talk about equipment, I'm like, if you have to rent of a piece of equipment, a bobcat, mm -hmm. some scaffolding, pump jacks, you know, all sorts of different things. And you can kind of project that out, let's say for, for a year. Now we know what our costs are. So we, now we've got to say, okay, what are our expenses? How much are we going to spend in cell phones, <clears throat> paper clips, uh, get fuel in the truck. And that's where it gets a little sketchy okay. because when you're starting out, you just don't have the level of expenses that you're going to have. Right. right now you're doing the books yourself. Okay. But eventually you'll have a bookkeeper. Right. And, and, and so that's, but also it's like, how do you figure out if, if you're going to, you know, you have one truck now and eventually you're going to move to three trucks. I mean, so does the markup always have to just change to absorb that? No, that's why when, when you walk through all of this, what you're really going to start looking at is percentages. Okay. So we've got one truck now and two guys and fill in, you know, we've got these costs and these expenses and hopefully this net profit mm -hmm. and we're going to develop those dollar amounts. Then you're going to take that dollar amount. Let's say for example, for expenses and let, it, it's very hard to do math over just over the, <laughs> uh, over the podcast here. But let's say for in, in general, let's say that your costs are, um, a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I'm just making up a number so I can do s some math in my head. And you take those costs and you mark them up times 1.5. That's your markup. Let's just say we've, we've established that. Um, and so you're going to sell that $100,000 worth of costs for $150,000. Okay. And then you're going to spend some money on expenses. And let's say part of those expenses are one truck. Now we're growing a little bit and we need to add another truck. Right. Why are we adding another truck? It's probably because we have another employee. If we have another, if we have more costs, then we're doing more work. Right. So you want to take a look at things in percentages. Okay. So if my, for example, let's say that my cost of goods sold are 67% of my income. Mm -hmm. I want to, and that, that's a percentage that works out. That leaves me 33% of my income to pay for my expenses and have a net profit. As my costs grow, I want to make sure that that percentage of cost stays the same. So as I go from $150,000 of income to $200,000 of income, that leaves me 67%, you know, 67% of $200,000 is more than 67% of $150,000. So now I've got more money to pay for my costs. Does right. that make sense? So you, what you're saying is essentially if I'm going to if I'm about to raise my expenses by 25%, you know, because I want to buy a new truck or a new uh, circular saw or whatever, I better be doing 25% more business to make yeah, it even out. Yeah, in general. And that that example, your expenses, um, it, your expenses have a tendency to flatten out over time. Okay. What, I'm, what I mean by that, again, think about expenses uh, as the stuff that's not out in the field. Right. So, so let, let's take, it, for example, a bookkeeper. Uh -huh. You've got you've got five employees now and you've got a bookkeeper that's processing your payroll and you add another three employees. So almost 50% more, you know, increasing the size of your team. It doesn't take that bookkeeper any, any longer to process three more paychecks, right? You're not going to have to pay your bookkeeper more. So your expenses aren't necessarily going to go up with your income, right. like your costs do your cost track, you know, because that's what we're marking up and selling, but your expenses over time have a tendency to flatten out. Gotcha. So you can add a truck, but is the truck, are you adding it on the expense side right. or, or the cost side? You just kind of got to do that. And you know, that analysis, I see what you're that, saying. Makes yeah. that makes sense. Yep. And, and, but that's the, that's the big struggle, um, is, is determining what that markup needs to be. And it's very, very simple. You can take a look at it and say, what's my income and what's my cost of goods sold? If you divide, and I don't care how you, I don't care how you got to your price and I don't care what your, your costs are. 
meaning we we marked up our subcontractors by 10 percent. We marked up our materials by 15 percent. We marked up our labor by 2 percent. All of that added up together. The cost is our cost and the price is the price. So if you divide your price or your total income by your total cost of goods sold, that gives you your markup. And no and, matter how many markups you use to get there. But you're I mean, you say how many markups, but you're a fan of the single markup, aren't you? Yeah. So you just go one across the whole business. Just choose it. That's because when you look at your total income and you divide it by your total costs, that is your markup. Period. So, yeah, period. So you can get there by 10 different ways, meaning we're going to take one piece of this cost and mark it up by this percentage, right. another piece of the cost right. by this percentage. But the math works out. You could just total all of that up and and take your price and divide it by that. It's the same thing. You're, you're and working the reason a lot I'm, harder to get to it to a place you could have got to with one number. That's right. And in the the way the way that that works out and really helps construction business owners is when you have one markup, let's say it's 50 percent mm -hmm. when you're when you're talking to a client and they're saying, well, how much is this going to cost? Or let's talk about numbers. And you've got one markup in your head and you can say, well, I got 10 grand in framing. I'm going to have another 10 in labor for this. Plus, my subcontractors are going to be about five. That's twenty five thousand. One markup. 1.5 times 25 is going to be about 36, 38. I better say it's about 39. You can do that in your head in front of a client without seeming like, because it's just simple. And you can right. say, yeah, we're somewhere, you're looking at between 38 and $40,000. And that number just rolls out because you're taking all of those numbers that you do have in your head that, that are actually probably pretty accurate. And you're trying, you're trying to apply seven different markups to these different things. And right. you're like, uh, let me get back to you. <laughs> and, and you don't come across with that confidence. And when you can just say, oh yeah, we looked at this, you know, also I look at this job and in my head and a lot of contractors just know that it's a hundred thousand dollar project. I just know that's, that's where it's going to be. That's where the last few projects like this are, were. So when I say, oh, it's a hundred thousand dollar project, meaning that's my price and I know my markup is 1.5 or 50%, mm -hmm. then take a hundred thousand dollars, divide it by 1.5 to get back to my costs. And I can reverse engineer and figure out if I can make money or, or whatever. And that's getting way deep into the numbers. But that's why I'm a big fan of one markup because that's exactly what the profit and loss statement shows. So you, you mentioned 1.5 in your example. Is that is that the number where you feel like most of your clients are landing about? Uh, that's where I get them to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, uh, that's why they hire me is to figure out how to get there. What, what I find is um, it's funny when I go through a pricing strategy with, and it doesn't matter if you're a general contractor doing new homes or a remodeling contractor, or maybe even a subcontractor, specialty contractor. Um, in, you know, in general, I find that uh, your markup, needs to be between 35 to 50 percent. It certainly can be certainly can be higher. And when I walk through a pricing strategy where we work out the numbers and say, OK, what are your costs? Mm -hmm. What are your expenses? OK, here's what your markup has to be in order for you to make a profit. Uh, and that that markup ends up being 35 to 50 percent. They say, oh, my gosh, that is we're you know, we're using 20 uh, percent markup right now. And so when I tell them, hey, it needs to be 50% because here's how the math works out, they say, well, I can't do that. I say, well, what are you using now? 20%. And I'll say, well, where did you get 20%? And it's just, <laughs> I made it I, up. I don't, I made it up. Yeah. yeah. So, so the math tells you it has to be 50%, but you're, 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 you're tied to this number that you just guessed or someone told you contractors can't make more than 20% right. or, or whatever. Or they say, hey, you, you know, you can't make more than a 20% margin. And I'll ask them and say, okay, well, a 20% margin is a 25% markup. Did oh. you realize that? And they're like, well, no, I meant 20, you, 20, you just, you can't make more than 20%. And I'm like, nah, see, trust me, you know, the math will show you exactly what it needs to be. Well, so let's do margin then, since you just mentioned it. And there, I think there's plenty of confusion between markup, margin, profit. So what, explain yeah. to me margin in, in uh, yeah. dumb Justin terms. Okay. So I want you to think about the, uh, a page in a book, I'm all right. You. And, and, and it's got words written on the page <laughs> and for you, you can think about a coloring book if you want. <laughs> that would be Maybe helpful. Thank you. By numbers, right. So think about the space between the edge of the words and the edge of the paper. Okay. That's called the margin. 
So the margin for your construction company is the space between your costs and your price. Okay. And we need that space to be big enough to pay for our expenses, cell phones and paper clips and stamps, and leave us with a net profit. So your margin is your expenses and your net profit beyond your costs. Okay. And we need that space to be big enough to pay for all of those expenses and have something left over. And what I typically will say is for contractors, you got to be shooting for eight to 10% minimum net profit. That means after all the bills are paid, that we're making eight to 10% because below that you have a lot of cash flow problems. Okay. Most contractors that, that I find when I start working with them are hovering, if they're making any money, they're hovering around three or 4%. And that gets a little bit um, misleading because you can look at a profit and loss statement and look down at the, at the bottom and see some, uh, a, a dollar figure there. And it equates to three or 4% of the, of the income. And it could be a substantial number, depends on what the income is, what size of the company is. But in general, you're going to chew up three to four to five percent of your available cash in operating the business. What I mean by that is if you look at your profit and loss statement for January 1st to December 31st, and there's three percent of the dollars left over on December 31st, well, that money's never there because January 1st came around and rent was due and payroll was due, and you had you had to buy materials for the next project. See, the, the paper, it's real, on paper, it's real easy. There's a beginning and there's an end when we can look at the numbers. But in a business, it's day to day. It never stops. Okay. And so if you're only making a 3% net profit or 4%, maybe even 5%, that money's never there because it's always being constantly used in the business. So you need to be around 8 to 10%. So you got some breathing room. You're not borrowing money, uh, or taking out a line of credit, uh, to pay for some, some basic, some basic bills of the business. Does that make, does that make sense? Totally makes sense. And that ma man, that is the biggest stress reducer you can have when you're out there on your own doing this stuff is not having the, the bill, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to, I got to get this check from the client so that I can deposit it really quick and then use it to buy the materials over here for the other client. <laughs> That's yeah, and a then bad one road to go down. Yeah, and and one hiccup happens, and your customer doesn't pay their invoice on time, or you feel bad because you ran into a schedule delay, and so you're like, okay, we'll don't worry about paying that ten thousand dollar invoice. Let us correct this mistake. I mean, stuff happens, mm -hmm. um, but but you're just one when you're operating at that low uh, of net profit, then you're just one little hiccup away from being out of business because it's like. Yeah, we showed that we there's a big difference between showing a profit and having cash. Yeah. Like yeah, I said, absolutely. Hey, the, the profit and loss statement shows that we made a profit, but I don't have any money. Right. Gonna, we got to shut down because I don't I can't pay my guys. Right. All right. This is a good place to stop. I want to I want to stop us here because I want to tease the next episode. We're going to be back uh, with Sean Van Dyke. Uh, for a second part of this series. Um, in the meantime, visit him at seanvandyke.com and uh, what is it? Connect at seanvandyke.com yep. if they want to reach out to you. Yeah, connect at seanvandyke.com. And uh, we will be back again for the second part of this series on business basics. Until next time, this is Justin for Sean and Jeff. Keep craft alive and happy building. <laughs>